This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Welcome to another edition of Silent Voices. Let's take it straight away to our good friends at Legally Kidnap for this update. He's awake. Well, hello, baby LK. Did you have a good nap? I know what you need. A diaper change in a bottle. Oh, there's somebody at the door. I'll be right back. Hello? I am from Child Protective Services. We got a report of a crying baby. Um, he just woke up from his nap. I was just going to change his diaper and give him a bottle when the doorbell rang. What? Leaving that poor child alone to answer the door? What kind of a parent are you? Well, I'm doing my best. I must see the child at once. Let me in. Now. He's fine, but okay, come on in. <coughs> oh, hello, Officer Friendly. Ma'am. Would you let a predator into your house? Why, no, I wouldn't. Then what the heck are you letting her in for? Well, officer, I thought I had no choice in the matter. On the contrary, you do have rights. It's up to you to know and exercise them. You insignificant fool. She has no rights. I am from the all-powerful child protective industry, and I have spoken. Let me give you a few safety tips for dealing with them there social workers. Tip one. Keep your mouth shut. You have the right to remain silent. Should you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be twisted out of proportion and used against you in a court of law. They did not know that. Just stay calm, be polite, ask about the accusations against you, and offer her no information whatsoever. You fool. She still has to let me into the house. Tip 2. Has to see your search warrant. According to the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, you have the right to be secure in your person, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures, and they must obtain a warrant. CPS workers are trained to coerce and manipulate their way into your home, but no matter, they can't enter without your permission or a court order. And it's not uncommon for a worker to misrepresent a few toys on the floor or a couple of breakfast dishes in the sink as a messy house and you as an unfit parent. I will have her sign releases of information so I can talk to doctors, teachers, daycare providers, and shrinks. Tip 3. Sign nothing except upon the advice of an attorney. I certainly won't, Officer Friendly. Remember, she is there to gather evidence against you and signing her papers such as service plans and releases of information are her way of getting you to admit guilt or getting your permission to get all the evidence she needs to snatch your kid. You idiot. She won't know what's coming. She will be lost in a sea of paperwork and bureaucracy. Tip 4 document everything. Get yourself a notebook and write down the times, dates, and names of every person you talk to, every phone call you make, every appointment you go to, everything. Collect any paperwork that you get and keep it all organized by date. Doing this from the start will help you later on down the line if this goes any further. You imbecile. I can take that baby whenever I want. No, please don't take my baby. Tip 5. If at all possible, talk to a lawyer immediately. You fool. She doesn't need a lawyer. I'm here to help. Tip 6. 
Never, never, never trust a social worker who is there to investigate you. They will lie, twist your words, fabricate evidence, and forge documents. Now you just keep these tips in mind when she's here and everything will be okay. I certainly will, Officer Friendly. Thank you. You mark my words, Officer Friendly. I will have that child in my clutches by the end of the day. Now, now, there's no need for that sort of thing. Run along now, you hear? Let's go back and see how things should have been done from the beginning. <coughs> Oh, there's somebody at the door. I'll be right back. Hello? I am from Child Protective Services. We got a report of a crying baby. I understand and would be happy to cooperate. Can I please just see your warrant? Why, I don't have one. Well then, I'll have to consult with my attorney so we can meet at your office to discuss your false accusations, say, next week. Now, if you would please excuse me, I have a baby to attend to. Social workers lie and manipulate their way into homes so that they can steal children every day. But if you follow my CPS safety tips, you'll be a CPS safety whiz in no time. Hi, my name is Chad Gregory. I'm from Kent County, Michigan. Um, I'm here to talk about my experience with Bethany Christian Services. Um, to give a little bit of backstory about the situation, uh, my daughter was, my daughter who is now 16, was kept out of my life by her mother for about 13 and a half years. My daughter sought me out shortly after turning 15. Uh, after contacting me to try to find out why I had not been a part of her life, she discovered that the entire time I had wanted to be, but was not being allowed to, at which point she finally felt comfortable in telling me exactly what had been going on at her mom's house all these years, um, which raised some, some of the situations raised some red flags with me. I tried to get help from every available source that I could find with no resolution. Um, eventually, uh, I finally did get an ex parte motion approved to get my daughter out of her mother's house. Shortly after that, uh, CPS discovered a, uh, a meth lab in her mother's basement at which point CPS finally decided to take some action. When CPS finally got involved, the Kent County Courts got involved with Bethany Christian Services. Things seemed to start out all right with Bethany Services. It looked like they were actually gonna try to help and get my daughter placed in my home with me. But after about a month or two, they decided to change our worker when they changed our worker, I don't know if the worker had a personal problem with me personally or if she was just following some sort of Bethany service propaganda. But immediately following her taking over our case, um, my visitations got taken away from my daughter's grandparents' house with supervised visits to being supervised at Bethany Services. Uh, about a month or so later, they decided to end my visitations altogether. Even though there was a court order, Bethany Christian Services tried to make it my responsibility to ensure that my daughter was attending counseling and getting acceptable grades in school. But denying me the ability to see my daughter to try to get her to do these things or help her in any sort of way with her education or her counseling. When I was not able to convince her to get better grades and continue with counseling over the phone, Bethany Services said I would not be able to resume my visitations with her until 
I obtained these goals. Um, I felt very helpless, um, angry, frustrated, trapped. It was a no-win situation that Bethany Christian Services had created for me. The worker that was in control was Jetty Barrett. She was aware she was aware from right from the get-go that I myself was not a Christian, uh, my, that my daughter was an atheist, I myself was, am a Wiccan, and I think that her whole, um, her whole thing with my daughter and I is that we weren't Christians, so we didn't, we didn't deserve to be able to spend time and create a father-daughter bond. She lied in court numerous times saying that my daughter wasn't doing this or wasn't doing that or um, whatever the case may have been. Um, my daughter has medical problems, so it was taking her out of school um, for long periods of time. Uh, her mother had failed to get her proper medical care, and over the course of the last year, we've found numerous things wrong with her, um, such as fibromyalgia and uh, many other things that has caused her severe medical distress. Um, that should have been dealt with years ago. Meanwhile, Bethany Services and Jenny Barrett were trying to initiate a closer mother-daughter bond with my daughter and her mother, even though my daughter did not want a bond with her mother for all the things that had happened. Me, uh, at the same time, trying to discourage the father-daughter bond between my daughter and I. It, it has really caused me to find a distaste for CPS and Bethany Christian Services. Um, it has really put a wedge between many members of my family and I because of everything that has gone on. If CPS and Bethany Services had stayed out of the situation, once I had the ex parte order and had my daughter out of her mother's house, everything that, Beth, that took Bethany Christian Services and Kent County Courts a year to accomplish would have taken me approximately two weeks to accomplish because we already had doctors and counselors and everything set up that is all the stuff that they had ordered. I have been over backwards trying to comply in every way, shape, and form with Bethany Services just to constantly feel like I was getting stepped on. Since the beginning of every, all of this, we have recently went for guardianship for my daughter's grandparents. They now, which was just approved about a month ago. So within the last month, Bethany Services and CPS and Kent County Courts have recently become out of our, has gotten out of our lives. If we could have, if they would have allowed us to do the guardianship a year ago, I think things would have been a lot different. Um, there has been a lot of animosity between my daughter and my current family. There has been a lot of anger put towards me from my daughter because of everything that she's had to endure because at the hands of Bethany Services. If anyone has a choice of an agency to work with and wanted advice on who to trust and who not to trust, I would say Bethany Services would probably be the last, last group of people that I would ever trust with any of my children. I've cried myself to sleep many nights. I've emotionally beat myself up over all of this because I was the one that called CPS to try to get help for my daughter 
to protect her from her mother. And it, it's just caused nothing but heartache for the last almost year and a half now. I'm happy that the nightmare is now over. And anybody that is dealing with Bethany services, I, I wish you the best of luck. Um, and all I can do is advise that keep your guard up. Don't trust them. Uh, if you're dealing with Jetty Barrett, definitely don't trust her. She will say one thing to your face and then another thing to the courts. Uh, numerous times she put all the blame on the attorneys or on the court when it was her request that certain actions be taken. Um, if you have a way out of getting out of Bethany services, then do, do what you can. Guardianship is out there. It is available. If you've got friends, if you've got family that you know, you love, and you trust, um, turn to them. They're your best allies. Um, try to get somebody guardianship that you know and trust and get Bethany Services out of, out of your life. If you've never dealt with Bethany Services and you're interested in helping people that are in need of help, um, awareness is the best thing. Awareness on what Bethany Services is doing. They're an adoption agency and a foster care agency. All they care about is keeping kids in foster care and putting kids up for adoption. I myself was adopted. I see adoption as nothing as a form of peonage or slavery because it's the buying and selling of children. Um, if, you had a, if you had turned to somebody to go through adoption procedures, DA, there is a, uh, an organization called DA Blodgett. Um, from what I understand, they're pretty good. Um, and most of the people there, from what I understand, actually do care. Uh, it's not just a money racket for them. Bethany Services, they just care about the money. They want to get a paycheck. I hope I've been able to enlighten some people, hope I've been able to help some people and enlighten uh, people on the cold hard facts of what's really going on out there with some of these agencies. Maybe somebody won't make the same mistakes that I've made. Um, good luck and blessed be. I'm Kevin Fifield, Byron Center, Michigan. I got involved with the CPS back in a nasty divorce I got involved with back in 2009. Um, unfortunately, the court system and the lawyers all told my ex-wife to use the CPS, um, you know, to manipulate the system. And it worked effectively for my ex-wife in, in some various ways, um, which were very unfortunate. And, um, but then at the end, I think we, we got justified. But what happened was, in 2009, my ex-wife filed for divorce. And then she, as she filed for divorce, she saw things were not going her way. So by the year 2010, August of 2010, she decided to, over frivolous things, come up with um, CPS, nonsense CPS things, making my kids lie. Um, one of my sons lied for her, basically, taking them to take them to the therapist that we were working with and say I grabbed their arm when I never did, um, which was just, just crap. He was at that time 14 years old. Then what ends up happening is she propelled and keep going, keep going. CPS workers, CPS worker, we caught them lying, um, falsifying records, and I have the records to show that she falsified them. In fact, her, her supervisor contacted me and said they were falsified. Um, so, and hopefully that individual is not employed by the state of Michigan anymore. 
so then what ends up happening, it keeps going, keeps going. The situation escalates. Kids get empowered when they can see they can lie and get away with it. And they got a, another parent agreeing with it. So what ends up happening is, in the long run, you know, after this all happened, by the end of 2011, I got an altercation with my son, put my hand on his shoulder, and two of them attacked me in, my, in their home because I was over at their mom's house trying to talk to them after they were high and drunk and trying to talk to them about what was going on, why stop acting this way, don't use the F word for your mom, don't use that in front of me. And what ends up happening is they both attacked me, I wrestled them, left a bruise on them, I guess, from pushing them back. And my ex-wife took the boy right into the, the hospital, of course. On, it happened on a Friday, on a Sunday. Sitton said that I tried to choke him to death and all that, which was negligent. So Judge Feeney's heard all these things many times out of this individual, my ex-wife. And what ends up happening is we then go to CPS. We had a CPS um, supervisor come down on me saying I had to be on the list and all that. And I might add, they put me on the list one time for grabbing my son's wrist like this and letting go. Um, and then I caught him doing it, and I called him out, and they had to take me off the list because I said that was not nothing to put me on the list for after grabbing my son's wrist like that, didn't leave a mark, nothing. Uh, Kent County Sheriff called me and goes, there was no marks, no nothing. I took that information in and said, why am I on the list? Because I found out they wrote me a letter. They said, well, Mr. Fifield, I we apologize. That was a mistake. Had I not followed up on it, I'd have still been on that list for that in incident. And, you know, I don't know how many parents are, you know, reach out and grab your son, try to calm him down, not trying to grab their arm and rip it off or anything like that, just trying to, hey, calm down. So what ends up happening is kids see empowerment, that their mom is doing this, they feel stronger. So the whole December 11 incident got, ended up being on the list. The, um, the girl that um, did all the investigations all those time, the one that falsified records that we caught her at doing, she was in her glee that day when that happened. So what ends up happening is I said, I'm going to fight this, and I ended up fighting it. And I proved in the court because you had a hearing. I hired an attorney for the first part of it. It was two days long. And I'm, I said, you know what, I'm not going to hire you again. I'm going to keep doing it myself. And I went ahead and just presented my own case the second day, and I ended up winning. The reason I won, when you have an assistant attorney general for the state of Michigan, by, you know, I don't want to get into his name, but I'll be glad to provide the documents and provide his name, sit and say, Mr. Fifield, as they were you know, cross-examining me, does that make you mad that kids smoke pot and get drunk? And I said, it, I said yeah, it makes me mad. How mad does it make you? I said, it's wrong. I said, Mr. Comstock, it is wrong to be able to sit and justify this. He said, well, you better get used to it. 99% of the kids get drunk and high in the state of Michigan. And I said, that is sick. So the judge, which is a very nice man that oversaw the hearing, I used that. I did my own closing statement. And I said, I don't need, no, I don't need to say anything. You saw my boys up here telling stories. Um, they couldn't even lie good and telling these tales because they're pushed by their mom because their mom, if she gets, you know, gets them against me, she keeps her child support going. And I might add, she's, she's held the kids back in school so they're going to graduate when they're 19 and a half. So she keeps getting child support up until the end of it. That's what this has happened in the court system today with Judge Feeney and the rest of the people out here. They've allowed this nonsense to go on. Take them out of good schools, put them in other schools. Now they're in computer online schools. And um, the judge goes along with it. Well, in March I had a hearing with Judge Feeney because she knew the, my hearing was done with CPS. And she's now basically, I'm not saying on my side, but she understands now. She looks at it and says, you know what? 
there's issues here. Why these kids are jumping around from school to school to school, failing, failing, failing. And the end result of this whole issue is back in May, the judge over in Lansing issued his, his statement to me. I was removed off the list. The one individual that was my problem with DHS was terminated. And the bottom line is, can't say we really won. The kids lost because you now have two children, two boys, 18, that are still, they're on computer online school. So they're, they're not functional in the real world and somebody's still collecting child support on them because of the fact of the matter is it's about money. It's not about the kids' welfare. After the first year, I will be taking that individual back to court because she's not going to do that to my third son. So basically, yeah, we won, but the kids lost because of the judicial system and legal wrangling. But I think the, I honestly believe the justice system is starting to wake up um, about this issue, and they're starting to see what's going on. It's not appropriate. And I honestly believe they're looking at it saying, you know what? You can't throw somebody under the bus for being a good dad or wanting to be a good dad or a good parent. It goes women's way too. And then try to revive them in the kids' eyes because my kids will always look at, look, will always look at me tainted forever. And it's unfortunate when, in reality, I've run a business for many years, th almost 30 years I've been self-employed, um, and always paid my paid my bills, have a uh, you know great income. Not bragging about that, but it, I've always supported my family on the utmost. But it's all about the money and how much money they can milk out of me. And like I said, now my kids are living in a home with a gentleman. I don't know who he is. I don't know anything about him. But I know had he had my had I had my say about it. They'd had, we'd had joint custody. None of this stuff would ever happen with DHS. None of this would ever happen to CPS. And they ended up, like I said, the kids actually become the loser. And I want to thank you for watching today's program of Silent Voices No More. If you'd like to contact us, be a guest on our program, you can contact us at miparentalrights at gmail.com. That's miparentalrights at gmail.com. We also have a social network I'd like you to join, and that's at miparentalrights.ning.com. That's miparentalrights.ning.com. Until next week, my friends, remember, your voice can make the difference.